I'll kick off um, tonight's presentation. And this is going to be um, about power users. And tonight I'm going to start off with Access 2013 and then I'm going to talk to you about light switch. Um, so, many years ago, there was one great tool for develop or for power users and uh, or power users slash developers, and that was Access. Who's built an Access solution, an MDB? Wow, not even half of us. Um, well, let me tell you, back in the day, it was a very simple choice because it had the entire market. Uh, then, uh, you know, there's a smaller percentage using vis Visual Basic 3 and 4 and got bigger and bigger. Um, now, if you are looking for, if you're a developer and you're looking for an awesome version of Access, this is not what you're going to see tonight. This is Access Services and this is building something for the cloud. And this is not a developer building something, this is a Mary the, Mary the receptionist, or Mary the power user. That's who we're talking, sorry, probably Mary the knowledge worker would be better. Someone Mary in marketing, that type of thing, where she just wants to have a record of, of people that attended this morning's event. So we're gonna look at this, and I want you to look at this in context of, do you want Mary doing stuff in this, where you can potentially um, take over when you know you need it developed further okay do you want her using this instead of whatever she uses today which is probably an Excel spreadsheet fair enough um, but some of these Excel spreadsheets end up with thousands and thousands of rows and other relationships and once they get beyond a simple list they potentially should go somewhere especially if they've got numbers in and you're just trying to add things up and you want some a bit of integrity now, Microsoft have done this before in Access Services 2010, for SharePoint 2010. I was very disappointed in that. And I'll tell you why I was disappointed. Does anyone know? Because it turned a, a access table of, say, 10,000 records into a SharePoint list. So it turned it into a SharePoint list. And doing that, you didn't get proper relationships and things like that. Also, you had a bit of a performance hit, and it's not how I would have wanted it. I would like if this thing turned it into, turned my access database into a SQL database, use some REST layer or um, some layer that just did a front end, and it was still there in an access database, uh, sorry, a SQL Server database with proper relationships and all that type of stuff. That's what I would want. And that's what they've done here in this version. And in fact, I, uh, there was an interesting comment from Bill Gates who had this review and he said this is the best version of Access that I have seen since Access 97. Okay, and that was a good version. So this is, you're not going to agree with that comment if you're look, thinking of it from a developer's point of view. Okay, so I want to quickly tell you that it's very easy to do what I'm about to do. Um, you end up with a front end that is in SharePoint, okay? It's uh, not extensible, but it's very robust. By that I mean Mary, the marketing girl, can build a data entry app that will not have bugs, that doesn't fall over with weird data and stuff like that. Very robust. Plus she can build something that's not ugly, okay? Um, the back end is um, very simple to use from Mary's point of view, but um, it's a SQL Server database one SQL Server database with tables and relationships and triggers are built under the covers and check constraints are there and all that type of stuff. So, um, basically, uh, the way this works is you have a, um, you know, a SharePoint farm. If, if it deploys to a SharePoint farm, you can have database mirroring. Um, the way that the Access MDB, or the Access Rich Client works, is it calls the, um, the SharePoint uh, APIs, um, which calls through to a data layer, calls into SQL Server. Okay, and the browser obviously calls those same things via JSON. Okay, this is what it will look like. You will open up SharePoint and you will type in here, I want to build an app. I want that app to be Access. And 
then you will start using the familiar access UI. So let's look at what this looks like. I'm going to um, look at a Northwind MDB file and I'll go ahead and create an app. Uh, I'll import some tables and then I'll make a UI and we'll, and we'll see whether you think that this uh, will work well and then I'll create a view. So let's um, fire open this. Now before I kick off and show you what's going to happen here, I, are you seeing that fine or is that dodgy? I might just change the screen resolution down and I cannot. Um, all right, what am I going to do there? Uh, reconnect it, okay. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, I'll do it again. And display. Uh, what do I go down to that? This is going to be damn ugly. Right, is that better? Yeah. Okay, great. So before I kick anything off, I just want to show you the end result. The end result, I'll just go into... Um, I'll just go and look at one of my um, Northwind, <coughs> Northwind demo. So this is what I want to end up building for you. I'll go into products, and this is the solution that Mary has built. And I'm going to show you how to build this exact solution. So you come in here, and you can see that um, we've got a record here. If I wanted to go and add, let's just say I wanted to add a new product, and I'm going to add a new product. Um, Keith, what's your favourite chocolate? Uh, Turkish delight. Turkish delight. Oh, I'm not sure I can do that. Um, my wife's Greek. Turkish del <laughs> delight. Um, the last time I did that joke with TJ, he took me seriously. Okay. All right, there's the cost. Now look at the supplier. Uh, who's that sold by? Who sells Turkish Pac delight? Pac Who? Pac-Man. Pac um, <laughs> yes. All right, so Maimon Industries. Now, Maimon Industries, he's not in here. So Mary would have to build a lookup form, but it doesn't exist. So I'm going to show you what you get out of the box. Come in here, um, and this is going to be Maimon Industries. Okay, and uh, um, Oz Demir and Maimon. And uh, his city is, uh, well, Turkey. All right. Now, I will save that, right, George? Save that. Press yes, George. Yes, you want me to press yes? Are you sure you want me to press yes? Are you sure? To save the record, you want me to press yes? Can you double check that? You will still want me to press yes? No, you have to press no. Now, what I want to explain to you, first of all, this is ridiculous UI. I can't believe this got past anyone, but <laughs> Mary will waste so many records she's been entered, you know, until she gets used to pressing the button that's completely different from Microsoft Word. Go figure. But do you think you can change this message? The answer is no. If you don't like the colors here, do you think you can change that? The answer is no, even though this is a web app. You could change it by um, potentially changing the theme inside SharePoint, okay? But you can't get in there like you might think as a developer and start changing CSS behind this app. Um, now, the, every time that you ask the Access team for a feature that you could plonk in a tiny bit of jQuery to improve something, the answer is no, Adam. And the reason is, Adam, this is a railed experience. And I had to actually ask, what is a railed experience after I'd heard it a few times? A, does anyone know? 
A railed experience is when you get on train tracks and you're on them and you're not getting off. So this is the experience you will have in access services. You will, um, one of the things that they, may, that they wanted to do is they wanted to fix the problem of Mary or many other access developers creating an ugly UI. Access got a lot of flack for creating bad UIs. Now, that might be true, but this seems a bit sad. But you won't have ugly UIs. The other thing that they didn't want is they didn't, one of the other bad things about Access is when you installed a new version of Office, your app that was working now didn't work. But that doesn't happen anymore because this is in the browser. Plus, they have been very careful with the HTML and stuff they've selected. Um, uh, hold on. I just lost Wi-Fi. Uh, hold on. Let me just double check. Um, you might want to check that the other Wi-Fi here is on. Did you lose it as well? Yeah, so that box is out. I think it's restarting now. Oh, okay. All right. It's coming back. But I'll just, I'll just carry on telling you. Uh, what you... Um, okay. What you'll want to do... Let me just check. Wi-Fi private. <coughs> okay. Hopefully that will fix up now. Um, what you'll... Um, Hang on a second. Because we're also... We've lost the board back here. So. Oh, sorry. Does that mean when IE goes to IE 12, they're off? Yeah. Okay. Yep. But I hold it anyway, because ask the question after if it's good. It's not. No. Right, okay. So I will answer that because it's a good question. That's a bloody good question. So, so you tell me when we're back, but I'll tell you the answer quickly now. One of the things that they did want it to happen is they wanted it to keep working with future versions of browsers. So they, were, they, they tried to be um, conservative in the HTML and CSS they went with. They don't want the problem of an Access app breaking, ever. Which is... Mm. Boy, news took a long time today, longer than ever. Yeah, I didn't even think it was that busy a month. Oh, you guys talking about Xbox, wasn't it? Was it Xbox the problem child? Okay. Okay, so um, the question was, will this still work in IE12? Well, I can't predict the future, but I can tell you the Access team told me that they were very conservative in the HTML and the CSS choices that they went with, very mainstream, because they want this to work forever in all browsers. Okay, so I'll press no, George, and then I'm going to press save, and uh, I lost that because I lost con connectivity. That's a, a bugger. So, uh, anyway, you get, uh, you get the idea. Okay, I go, I go through and, and all those lookup tables have been sorted. Um, in addition, if I wanted to filter on just the product starting with B, I can make my own little queries here. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look at where this comes from. I will have a look at a Northwind uh, database here, just the, the normal Northwind. What I want you to be aware of is when you look at this and you go home and go, I want to do what Adam said and I want to turn this thing um, into a SQL Server database and Access Services 2013, you will probably go into Database Tools and then you'll go, oh, SharePoint, that's the one I want. So you click on SharePoint and then you'll click this, we'll enter the URL and we'll press Next, right? Wrong. Read what it says. It says share, it will create a SharePoint site by creating SharePoint lists for each table. Be a, what this should do is this should have a, a warning here. This is warning. This is not the new SQL Server style thing. This is the old one. Um, now, obviously, they haven't decommissioned it because there are going to be times where you do want to make a choice and you want that table in a SharePoint list, um, especially if there are a lot of standalone things. But if it's an app of a whole set of related tables and stuff, you do not want this choice. 
Mary's first experience with this might be to come in here and go new and then choose something. So I'm going to choose project management. I can come in here and uh, I'll go Maymed's um, projects and then I'd have to select a web location. Let me just go back and select that web location. Um, and I will select that and I'll press create and what this does is it goes up to the cloud um, uh, Office 365 grabs the latest, the latest template um, turns that into a SQL database puts all the tables in there the views and then it goes into SharePoint creates a SharePoint app and uh, then we've got a solution so you're going to see what Mary was able to create when she just wanted a basic set up. While it's doing it, I'm just going to get rid of this. Thought I got rid of that. Okay. So that should be carrying on. I am just going to check everything is all okay. That's Google server. Oh yeah, that should be fine. And that didn't work. That was a great example. Let me just do that again. I'm going to do asset tracking. And this is going to be Maymet's assets. And hey, what happened to my... Uh, oh, let me just grab that again. I'll come back to here. And hopefully this will go up. Grab that and you'll see a new SharePoint app that has a whole series of tables. From the screen capture you can tell that has assets and something else I can't really tell. And that is taking substantially longer than it should. I'm going to close this down, try it once more. That definitely should be working. And the only thing that happened was uh, a few updates that maybe I shouldn't have installed. All right. Could we just be able to slow the picture to come up? Mm, should be fine. Okay, while it's happening, um, any questions? Well, um, can I? So can you tell what's sitting where, what you're talking, where SharePoint, where, where what? Yes, you can, and um, I will talk to you about that in a second. Actually, while this is doing this, I, the app is being created, but it isn't ready to be used yet. So, <laughs> so it's. Uh, I'm just going to close this. Just try that once more, <coughs> and then I'll answer your question. All right. So you can see these things with the, uh, the clouds here. Um, George, George's projects. See if this is any better. But um, to answer your question, I'm going to switch back because I've got a slide on that, George. Um, I'll come. Uh, I mentioned this, that it's, it works in all browsers. They've tested in substantially more browsers than this, but um, this is what is retailed. Um, and then I want to talk to you about um, the different types, but so I'll answer your question now. You can choose whether you want to deploy it to Office 365 or your own SharePoint. Your own SharePoint can be talking to SQL Azure, or you can um, use your own SQL Server databases. SQL 2012 is what's supported. And that is... And in your instance, that's in my case, yeah. I'm using. Uh, in my case, I'm using 
uh, SharePoint 2013 that's in our office. I'm not using the cloud. Yes. The link, the web location you put in has more stuff than we were putting in before. Yep. Yes, I know. I tried it. Okay. Yeah, I did that on purpose, but I don't think that's going to help me. So I'm going to go now and um, uh, create a brand. I'm going to start again from the beginning, and I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to use the browser rather than what Mary's just done here, which is creating a, a basic app. So let me um, come here and Mary will come into site content and she will need to add an app, a brand new app for her Northwind application. She's got it in an Access MDB and she needs to migrate it. So what do you think you type here? Cool. Access. We type this. And we're going to go TJ's, oh, oh, I'll go Mammoth, Northwind. And I'm going to go create. And what that's going to do, down here you'll see Mammoth's, um, there it is. Oh, great. That is not happening at all. I am just... I am going to, something is not quite right, so I am going to, and it could be to do with those updates. This is not very smart, but I'm going to reboot this server because I can't think of anything else. Okay. Are you on that server? All right. Not Great, that's going to take a good 10 minutes to do that. So while that's <coughs> happening, I'm just wondering whether I should start off with light switch. Maybe. So, um, William, if you could um, go through, make sure that you can create an access app. Okay, just give that to George. Um, if you can um, make sure that you can create an access app, and open um, uh, central admin, please. Okay. All right. Let's move along. So I am going to um, go forward. Okay. So I want to talk to you about light switch now. So, which is not a railed experience. Light switch itself um, is very easy to get up and running. You'll just go in there and start creating an ap application. But to open it, we have to use Visual Studio. Now, some people are going to have issues um, creating a Visual Studio application um, if you're asking Mary, the power user, to do that. But here we go. We're going to create a, um, a light switch application. And I'm just going to call this um, Maymed's Northwind, or I'll call it Northwind Sydney. Let's go next. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what's happening <coughs> from the beginning. We are going to um, create this application. You can come into this data sources here and create a brand new um, uh, table. Okay, I can go add a table and when I'm in here I could type customers and I could start adding in you know company name, first name, things like that. I don't want to do that. Um, what I want to do is I want to show you how you would do this with Northwind. So you come in here and you want to add a data source and that data source could be um, a database and then you choose this and I will choose my local machine I'll choose Northwind and I am going to go OK and it's, it says what do you want and I will I'll just call this Northwind Northwind data I will take all the tables and I'll go finish and that will bring them all that will basically bring them all in, and so I have this mapping now. Here it all is. 
Um, so that's the first step. Once you've done this, it, it's a matter of just doing the screens. And you go out, out of form or out of screen. And uh, you might choose something nice like a list and details. And I might want the customers. And it will look at the related, related tables. And here's my customers. And what are related tables? The orders. So I think that's um, pretty easy for Mary to, to do. Um, not quite as easy as Access Services. Um, but here we have our model, our view model, and our view, essentially. Here is our mappings, um, and here's what we can use. So I'm just going to F5 that and see what the out-of-the-box experience is. And uh, the first thing that you will notice is this is, if we right-click on this, this is Silverlight. Okay, um, so this is, you click here and you see the records and you see the related records here. That's the out-of-the-box UI that Mary has created. There's a couple of things that I'll show you straight off which I think is pretty cool. I have a, I have a lookup form here, oh, sorry, um, a data entry CRUD form here. I didn't create it. This, this is just there by default. If I went ahead and created a nice form, I would get it. But by default, they give, them, give me the vanilla form. I think that's great. All forms are sorted. In fact, if you ask me, every single app should do this, whatever you build. MVC should do this by default, etc. cetera. Um, now, there's something else that I thought is kind of nice, um, the searching. Now, you know the search, you'd expect that just to search there. But let's just say, if, I don't know what's in Northwind Spain or something. They're the customers in Spain. See how it searched all fields by default? All fields by default are working. That search makes, to me, is awesome. That's how it should always work. If I want these fi five records exported, I can export to Excel. I click that. It doesn't open all these different dialogues and say, are you sure? Security risk, next, OK, you know, done. So all, the, all that data that would be exposed there is there. And that doesn't just happen on that customer's one. That happens everywhere. If I want those orders, there they are. There's your orders out to Excel. I just think that is awesome. That should always happen. Um, all right. There's a number of other cool things. Um, if I were to save this, close that, do I OK, George? Is it OK? You press cancel to save. You have to press cancel and then I can... How can two different teams get it so badly wrong? Is it just me or... That is bizarre. But of course, now we're in um, light switch, we could change that. We have more control. There is a reason for that. There's a reason. Um, explain our reason, George. I'd love to know. I don't know about silver light. But in the browser, the reason is because they're popping up, they don't have access they don't have n all the data required to save the record if you say yes. All they can do, because they're out of content, all they can do is to tell you that you're not saving. Are you sure you want to continue? Right. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Because okay. of the browser, I'm, I'm sure Silverlight has the same issue. Ah, right. Okay. Because in the browser, when you close and you get event, you don't have access to what's underneath right. it. Right. Okay. Yes, that makes a bit more sense. Thank you. Um, so, you could solve that by every, uh, every time you click in a field, you uh, update it. And then they'd never see that, would they? They would never have, you could take the save button away. Although you'd have other problems. Yep. But that's how some UIs are working. That's how Chrome works now. No pressing save anywhere. You change anything, it's changed. Too bad. And uh, it might be a better UI. Closing that. Adam, yes. Do you have a comment? One of the users says search is uh, only Can on you string fields. Search is only on the string. Is it only? On, is it a question or a statement? No, it's just a statement. Oh, it's a statement. Okay. Thank you. So uh, search only works on string fields, not on the numbers. Uh, okay. But obviously, you could change that. You could improve that. Okay. You've got more power. Um, 
if you want that, you need the mic to ask questions. Does it come with the built-in validations? Does it come with built-in validations? It does. So most um, validations are out of the box supported and you can obviously add your own. Now what I want to do is I want to explain to you that what I just showed you was um, light switch um, silver light. I personally wouldn't use it. I would only use the browser stuff. So let's, uh, let's go ahead now and, and not do this in silver light. Let's do this in the web. So the way you do that, you'd need to add a new client. And so you add a new client and you go OK. In order to add a new client, a project up to upgrade is required. Would you like to continue? Now, I'm not sure how Mary will feel about this. This is a bit scary. But what this needs to convert it to is light switch 3, which is a new project format. OK? And, you know, she might not be used to doing this. This will go through some conversion, pop up a browser. Maybe she won't be able to read that report. It's a bit nasty, but, you know, there's no red there, so everything went well. I'm not sure what she will do, but it's only one-time experience. Close that down. And down here we have a new client. Okay, and that it's got startup, so it's going to run first. And then we would go through adding screens. And I'm only going to, and the good thing is, see how clean that is? Even though there's a lot of screens for the Silverlight one, there's only one that we have to maintain. And we're going to take the same approach here. Um, I could, how would I do this? I have, see I don't have all the power of what I had before. I probably need um, a browse screen first to see all the customers and then I'm going to need a, a button or something to take me into the details because I don't have that, uh, that other one that we had before. So I'll go with this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to come into customers, choose customers. I'm going to go okay. And, oh, I just thought of something that I should show you. I'll make this one the default one again, set a startup. And I want to show you a tiny bit of customization if I can. Uh, one thing that I would like to do, if possible, see this customers doesn't have the right name. I didn't like that. And I want to show you how Mary would change that. You come back here and you go to that table, which is customers. And down here you'll see these perspectives, server, client, HTML. Now, you can see I have server, client, and HTML. That client was the Silverlight client. So we click on that client. And uh, let's see how we do this. Um, I believe there is a summary one here, and I could change that summary one to company name instead of ID. I think that's right. I'm just going to press F5. <coughs> and see how that's changed that? So it's changed that on all other places where, they end, where, where you know, Mary ends up using that customer. So the first one isn't shown, this one. Of course I could change that to an expression, first name equals la you know, plus last name, that type of thing. I could do a little bit more than that. But, so I would change it one place and it changes everywhere. I like that global feeling. Okay. Um, so let's go back and, oh, can I show you one more thing while I'm there? Because I think that it's worth showing one more thing. I'll just open up a browser. Here is a browser. Um, it's created all the services. Um, so I could, um, what is my, I need the, uh, hold on, let me just go to the, I'll open up the other guy, this guy, I'll make this the startup because I just want to know what port it's using, sorry, set a startup, there it is, so that will become the startup, I'll press F5 now, and here is the HTML client working, and this is HTML now, it's all HTML. This guy, not only has it created a UI, which we've got to improve in a second, but I want to show you um, we have, if I come here, I could get all the tables, customer, let's have a look, uh, it's not customer, 
um, what was it? Northwind data. Northwind data dot SVC. And well, what would I need there? <coughs> I think I should be able to just find all the products or customers. There we go. Now Chrome sucks when it comes to viewing this. I hate that. So we'll go over to IE, which is better at doing this. I'll just go start run. I explore. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And obviously, if I just want to see this one record, see this one record here, Chai? I could just come here and see just that record. Okay? Do you like that? that all those services um, are done for me. I think that's um, beautiful. Absolutely awesome. Uh, question, yes? Slide switch uh, compared to the ASP.NET dynamic data type of project. Is it a continuation work or? No, this is uh, unrelated to that, um, that dynamic data pro uh, initiative. And actually, we built many solutions on dynamic data, including for very large companies. Um, but I would not um, advise moving forward on that. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of investment in that from the ASP.NET team. Uh, all their investment is in MVC. So if you want, um, if you want a more of a templating solution, I would be going with LightSwitch. It's it's got more. It's more built for a power user. It's more of this style where you don't have to get in behind. Um, that had a lot of promise, but I I would be uncomfortable starting a brand new solution on it. Do you reckon there's a chance that they might coexist, you know, moving forward? That, that the what? light switch and dynamic data. Uh, I don't, I think that you will end up seeing, uh, my prediction, I don't know anything from Microsoft, but I would envisage it would be retired after this gets a lot more feature rich and, you know, it's got a lot more. Because I don't think that, um, that templating solution is going to be something that um, fulfills, that, that gets mainstream. It had, it's been out for a while, it didn't become mainstream, yep. and MVC is mainstream now, I would call. It's completely killed web forms as far as I see out there. And now we need something that isn't frightening to, develop, uh, to power users, and this is what it is. And for a knowledge worker, I would say it's access services. All right, so um, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, even if you don't want all their, their stuff, you might create a Silverlight project just to get this layer done. You might. It's pretty nice. Um, and obviously, um, it's, uh, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty friendly. And I'm going to show you how you take this further now, OK? Because I want to click on this and, and give me what, I, what you saw before on the rich client one or the Silverlight one. So I'll have to press stop now. And um, I, I noticed the first time, the first thing I noticed is that it showed me just the IDs again. Did you notice that? So I need that fixed up. How would I fix that up? Anyone got a clue? Perspective, Perspective into client. HTML. HTML client. Great. And then we go customer name. We would go under here. We change that to company name again. And we would press F5, and that first problem should be fixed up. All right, that's fixed. Then um, I will come down, I'll stop that. And I will need another form where the customer opens up the orders. So we could come in here and we could go add screen. And we would probably want to add edit details. And I'll add edit, customer, and yes, I want the orders too. So that's how we're getting there. We go OK. Now, how do I get, now I've got that, how do I get the, that form that I already had to call the other one? Well, you go into browse customers. Uh, I want to make it so each customer um, I will, on the, I'm, I'm looking for the action. So the action on the customer, 
There we go. When item tap, I want that to not show a tab, I want it to open up the other form, which is the added at customer. And then I go customers dot selected item. OK. And let's kick this open and see if that works. And now we have this. I will click on bollard, this one. There I have it, bollard. And if I want to see the orders, there I have the orders. Okay. Now, obviously, then I could go through the orders and start improving the orders screen. And I'd keep going this um, circular fashion where I do the main forms that I care about. Now, if I needed a developer to come in and build something much better for the orders, so it did partial orders and all this fancy stuff, I could now have him do that one chunk in maybe MVC, and I would call that. And so he looks after that complicated things. The rest of it is looked after by the power user. You can imagine this. You could also say the same thing about access services. You might do that chunk in access services, and just the powerful piece is done in possibly MVC. And that access UI calls that one form. That form in MVC is um, calling the SQL Server database because it's been properly architected from you know, a plumbing layer and do it that way. What are, all right, now, we've, we've seen all this. Is there any questions on this? Great. How do we make this, this UI nicer? Because I don't like the colors, you know. At SSW, everything's done in a bit of red and gray and things. How do I change all that? Well, can we get in towards the, in behind this and change the CSS? Yes. But I'm a power user. I don't know much about CSS. So let's talk about that. I want to introduce you to something super cool. Now, jQuery, uh, sorry, jQuery, I hope you've all heard of jQuery, and the mother is jQuery UI. Now, there's lots of things inside here that is cool, but I just want to show you this theme stuff. So this theme roller, how many people have already seen this? Just a couple. Okay, so for the rest, let me just show you how cool this is. You don't need to know any CSS. I want to, here is my, where's my header gone? Oh, there it is. Uh, I think my UI is, this isn't very responsive UI, is it? But um, I want to change, I want all these things to have a reddish color. So I can click on this background color, and I'm going to make that red. I'll click there. And why hasn't that, oh, there, there you can see that. I would like my buttons to be different colors and things, but you can come through. See that red there? I can change that to have um, uh, a textured layout of diamonds. So let's scroll down. See the diamonds are there? If I wanted um, all the borders to be red too. Okay. Um, you'll, yeah, anyway, you'll see that style of thing changing. And Microsoft um, Light Switch have not used jQuery UI for this, but they've used this idea. They have used jQuery Mobile. How many people are familiar with jQuery Mobile? Okay, all right, so a few more. Great, so let's just talk about jQuery Mobile, which has the same thing. Now, one of the things that um, the Light Switch team really care about is the solution that you do works beautifully on a mobile device, iPad, iPhone, Windows Phone, etc. So they have the similar thing in jQuery Mobile where you've got themes. But this one works, in my opinion, even better. And let's see how this works. And it says, look, you've got this, um, this little button, um, and that's how you, let's get rolling. So this is what it will look like out of the box, but if you want it to look like I do, I want these things, to, the buttons to be red and things, because that's my color. I can drag that down and change the button. And see, the buttons are all now red. Is that nice? And if I want something else red, I don't know what else I'd want red. Um, OK, maybe that's a bit too much. Um, but you get the idea. You can start changing these just by dragging the colors on that you want. Is this sexy? Now, how does this relate to what we're doing? I will show you. So let's come back here and 
this, what we're looking at here on the right hand side is what's called a logical view. You will want to jump in and see this from a file view. And this file view, if we go into the HTML client and we look under content, and this is actually the light theme that's been used. Now, you don't know anything about jQuery, oh, sorry, um, CSS, we're going to control A, control C. I'm going to come back to that cool site and I'm going to say import. And what it says is paste all your CSS there and press OK or import. And that's what it looks like. And that was the color we saw, the blue. So I'm just going to go through and do what I just did. Make that. And I'll get rid of any blue because I want it in red. And I'd be happy with that. Now what I would need to do is, is grab that. So I wish, I wish there was a simple way of just copying it, but I have to do this. I have to go download the zip. Oh, sorry. I'll call that. Um, uh, Northwind Sydney. Uh, download the zip. And then that will, did I click it? And I will get a zip file. I'll open that up. And then I'm going to grab what I need, which is in the themes. Uh, sorry. Uh, which one is it? This guy, Northwind Sydney. So I'll just take that. I'll just copy, copy, close. I will, I'll come back to my light switch one. And I'm just going to paste that. Should you, you have mixed spaces, fix this. Well, I'd say untabify because you don't want tabs all over that. And now it's done. Close that. You want to save changes? Yes. Let's run this and see if it looks any good. And see the red? And I'm not seeing enough red. I should have put red on the borders and things. Um, but yes, you can see I have now completely changed my style. <coughs> And I didn't touch any CSS. I thought that was pretty cool. Who loves that? All right. Who wants to hand code their CSS still? So, all right. Almost everybody loves it except TJ. Can they be plugging in the different mobile stuff? Hold on. Just take the mic. Just put your hand up if you need to ask a question. We are saying that it's for non technical users, right? But still, it's like you go to jQuery Mobile, import the CSS. Change oh. it there, export the CSS, come back yes, to your... Yes, you're saying it's not quite as friendly as it yeah. should be. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, don't forget this is a first version. I would agree there's a number of steps and that's not obvious. But don't you think it's totally cool that um, they support this style? And can you imagine the future where that style is built in? As opposed to Access Services where it's completely locked down. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, but don't forget... Most of the investment on light switch went with the Silverlight client and it's all going now to the HTML client and that's going to get better and better. So, um, that's that. Any questions on Silverlight before I switch back and um, show you the access services? Okay, so let's go back and compare this. All right. So... Uh, I don't have it open, so let me let me just open that, and I will connect in. All right, so let's um, go ahead and uh, create a Northwind thing from Access. So I'll just go Access. I am going to open up. Sorry, just want to grab the URL. Let me just grab that URL. And, uh, oops. And I'm going to create a brand new access database. I call it Project Management. And this is going to cut TJ's projects. There's a your web location. Create that. And that is going to go up to uh, Office 365, download the template, uh, go ahead and create a SQL database, put the tables in it, and views, and then create a SharePoint app, and then link it off to that. And now we're done. That worked much better, right? 
So here we have projects, employees, customers. And somebody that only knows Excel could get this far. Uh, if she wants to see how it works, she will open that and she will have a complete UI built. I'll get rid of that. And here we go. All right. Now, um, let's go forward and um, I am going to go and create this app from SharePoint and then import tables because I've just created a template here. That's not really what you'll do very often. All right. So let's go through and go to site contents and I'm going to add an app. And what type of app is it? Access. Thank you. And I'm going to create this app. And this is going to be called Northwind TJ. And we're going to create that. And it's going to give me this UI here. And you can see that Northwind um, TJ, wherever he is, it does, there it is, created. I go, um, I'll go into this. And it says, yeah, here's your access app. Go ahead and start using it. So you have to click this. This is the Access Teams version of Click Once. Not so, that, not so cool. Um, but this is okay. So we're in here, and we've got an empty app. What do we do now? Well, I probably need to bring in my Access app to get rid of that. So let's do a migration. We click Access. Where is it? Uh, I've got it in my my C drive here. Oops. And there he is. And I'll go OK. And it will look through there, grab all the tables. I'll grab them all. Thank you very much. Select them all. Go OK. And now by doing this, I've triggered um, all these tables being added into SQL Server. Now, obviously, if you've got tables in there, if you've got tables in your Access database that are using weird, um, weird things, so this is, so there's a type of, a, a data type called attachment, which SQL Server doesn't support. I would, I would tell you to clean up all these errors and get rid of the columns manually until you had no errors and continue on. But we'll just carry on anyway. Mary will probably lose those fields. And here we have a UI. This is it. Um, all done for you. The disadvantage of this over what you would have seen in LightSwitch is LightSwitch would only show you the ones that you've customized. I really like that approach. I think that's good. But um, Mary cares about the products one, okay? And here we are, have it. If she launches the app, she will see that web UI. Here's the web UI, all nice, working. So let's say that Mary wants a couple of changes. Let me try to think of what she might want. Just to, I'll just show you a couple of changes you can make. Let's just say you want that category field moved to the top and made red or something. Let's see what's involved there. I will go back to, oh, sorry. I will, there it is. I will come in here and I'll click on list. I'll click on, I don't know if this is obvious to me. You're trying to come here. This edit to me looks like the form's still loading. I'm not really sure if you'd agree with me on that, but it's just a slightly weird issue why you've got to click this. Anyway, here we are. I want to select these two. I have to hold down control, not shift, to make that selection work. I'll drag that up. I'll, I'll put it a bit cockeyed. It doesn't actually completely fix it. If I have it a bit closer, it will fix it. Okay, so Mary can't get it out of alignment too easy. I will then um, notice that I want to change the formatting. So I don't have many things to change. Tool tips and visible. I was hoping to change the color to red, but it's not possible. You look on the field here, you can see that you can change the data, you can change the formatting, captions, oh, I've got a little bit more now, captions, tool tips, but not the color that I want to change. I've, I've got events over here, they're the actions. Now, what I just told you was actually incorrect. I'm not sure if it's obvious to you, but you'd come up here and press red up there, and then you could make that font a bit uglier, okay? You could come in here, and the same thing. I, I just don't, I think this stuff obviously should be on the formatting one. That would be a bit more obvious to Mary. So we've made those changes. <coughs> uh, changed a bit of reordering. What else could I do? I could, uh, let, let's, just, let's just deploy that. All Mary has to do to deploy 
is press save. And now I'll go over to, I'll just, I'll just F5 this, this is what it was before. And here we have it. I'll click on products and you can see that that's now red and that's not. Okay, that's because that's a hyperlink which is overriding it. Okay, so that's kind of fair enough. Um, let me just try to do something else. I'll tell you something cool. This is just a small thing that um, if you ever have to deal with a Mary that, that they will like. Come over here. If you want to, you can move the order around. We can move products up to the top. And see that little icon there? They're all stars. This is not going to be obvious and you probably won't remember. You come down here to this and you can make that be a love heart or something or a soccer ball. Okay, it's good that Australia won last night. Beat Iraq. Press, uh, press save. We will go back here and you will see that change. I'll just refresh that. And there is products at the top with the soccer ball. Um, I just want to show you one more thing that Mary might want to do, and that might be to filter records. So what's the experience to do that? List data sheet. I want another tab over there to do that. So let's see how she could do that. Well, how do you add a, how do you add a query, a new query? The plus sign where? There? Yep. But we need to have a query. So how do we do that? We need to add the query first somehow. No, not a view. You have to go into advanced. Not so obvious, eh? But we come into advanced. We'll take products. We'll close that. I'll take all those. And I'll just do a query. I'll find all the, all the products that start with like B, beer. Maybe I should do. Oh, sorry. What am I doing there? And if I want to right click here and run and check I've got the right records, there's no run. So what do I do now? I have to actually come to view and then go data sheet. Save this. Oh, now I'm going to, sh uh, now I'm going to show you how old I am. QRY. <laughs> okay. There you go. So did it find some records? Yeah, it found a few records. Good. Now I'm going to close that. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to ask you again, how do I do that now? I press this. I'll call this um, all the B, the, I'll make it look cool because I thought I couldn't make it ugly. I choose here the record source which is QRY, beer, and then I'm going to add a new view and I have it here. I, I need to deploy that. All I need to do is press save. It's so insanely easy. I'm going to press F5 and now I'll go to products and I'll press beer and it's filtered down. Like it? Happy with that? I'm going to um, explain to you something that, um, that when I showed this in Canberra, they were unhappy about, just to let you know. Can you can you understand what um, they would be unhappy about in Canberra? In to, to do with web standards? So the first thing they cared about is, is this responsive? Because they've got to support a lot of mobile devices. And you'll see that this is not responsive design. OK? That's not good, but it's not a showstopper. The second thing they really cared about was does it support disabled people because you, they're not allowed to deploy a website that doesn't support disabled people. We never come across this issue. We don't have customers, even very large customers, ask us about this. And we just um, have deployed some enormous sites recently, like some of Australia's largest, and they haven't um, worried about this, what I'm going to show you, but I'll show you what the government cares about a lot. I'll press F12, click this. They need to know that that label is connected to the data so that the blind people will work. So you can see this label here. It's missing something called um, four equals, which will hook that up to the data. And you can see that that's not. And unless they can modify that and control that, no interest. So that's, uh, that's something just to be aware of. The other thing is um, when it has iframes, they get very upset. 
iframes um, cause them a lot of stress in Canberra. Okay? And uh, generally you shouldn't use them most of the time, but just be aware of that type of stuff because you're not going to have any control over it. Uh, does anybody in this room care about these particular issues? Okay, so we've got half a hand out of all of you, so not, not a high percentage. I want to just um, show you what we had with light switch. Let's um, F5 that. I'll come into this guy and we'll see the orders. I'll just, um, just try to, we'll press F5, uh, F12. Oh, I'm in Chrome, aren't I? Let's just do, well, I could use Chrome, but I'll just do the same thing just to be consistent. Okay, um, let's press F12. Let's click that. So, so you can see that that four is hooked up. That's healthier. Okay, if you see iframe, okay, healthier. So just be aware that your output in this is a substantially better one. All right, so um, there's one other thing that I would like to um, talk to you about with respect to access services. And that is, oh, where are we? Once, uh, any, any other questions related to HTML and things like that? You're happy with that. Now I've built this application. This is working great for Mary. But what if Mary um, wants to use uh, some other data? I want to remind you of why Access was so awesome in the early days. Okay. So, Access was very successful in the early days for many different reasons, apart from a very friendly UI. But one of the f it was one of the first apps that I ever came across that was so easy to connect to so many different data sources. You could link to Excel. You could link to a text file. You could link to SQL Server. You could link to Fox Pro tables, DBase tables, everything. It was really awesome. And it was all read-write. It was great. Um, now, what's the story with this? You can import an Excel spreadsheet but you cannot link. You can import a text file, but you cannot link. Um, we can import from um, other ODBC sources. Um, you can import from SharePoint, but you cannot link. Wrong. You can link to SharePoint. It's the exception. So let me just show you how that works. Okay. So let's just imagine that we have, uh, I'll just come here, we have a, I have made a list in a completely different site collection, completely different site collection. I've made it really simple. So we'll come on here, we'll, it's just called Adam's List and there's nothing in it, a couple of records. I want to use this list in a completely different site collection inside my access services because that's a pretty common scenario. That, that you know Mary will want to use. She wants to use some shared data. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back to. Um, do I not have? Did, did I close the access one? Let me just check. Oh, there he is. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to want to link to it. How do I do that? What do I do? Existing data, which one? SharePoint list. Very good, SharePoint list. We come in here, and this is the only one that has import and link. We're going to paste that. That's the link that I just, that external list that I had. There's Adam's list, and there's uh, all the other ones. I'm just going to go, okay, great. And that is going to say, do you trust this? Now, I'm not sure why they asked me to trust it, because everything that's going into the um, store, you know, this is, in, this is internal to me, so 
I don't know why I have to trust something internal, but um, this is probably for Office 365. Even if you take ones from Office 365 today, everything that goes through Office 365 is very carefully checked. So it's, there's not really a need, but I guess they're putting this there for the future when they're just allowing anything into the Office, um, into Office 365. I'm not sure. To me, I wouldn't have that until you need it, but anyway. Um, here we have Adam's list. I'm going to move Adam's list up to the top. Scroll it up. I'll make it number two. Of course, I'll give it a cool little icon. There we go. Yes. That's the hottest tip of tonight, isn't it? So th let's save that and let's have a look and see if it works. I'll click on Adam's list and will it get my data from the other site collection? Let's hope so. Yeah. Thank goodness. We got it. Now, let's go and edit this record. Hello, what's going on here? Oh, this view is read only. Okay. Well, I would say... Um, that this wasn't what the Access team would have wanted. I'm sure that they ran out of time, and that's why that's read-only. Um, I, I don't know in, in this case the reason, but I can tell you my past experience with Microsoft is sometimes they disable a feature just because it hasn't been heavily tested, not because it doesn't work. And I would guess that this might be fixed in a future service pack. But how do I fix that now? I can click on edit and here is my list, Adam's list. This guy here, I can click that and I can say, here's the URL, edit this data. I don't know if this is a dodgy workaround or not. Um, I will make that blue so it looks like it's a hyperlink. How do I underline it? I'll make it underlined as well. And that looks like a link, doesn't it? Kind of. I'll press save on that. I will then come back to here and I'm going to see a link there when I press F5. I'm going to press F5, edit this data, click that. I come across here and I say um, Hi Mehmet and TJ. They're both Turkish, how's that? I should just say, hi Turkey. Okay, and if I want to save it, where's the save button? Oh, to save it, you actually press stop. How weird is that? All right. How does Mary get record saved? She must be so confused. Anyway, we, we will come back here and it hasn't been updated. So Mary will have to press F5. She will just get this message. She will just not know what it means, but you just press F5 twice. <laughs> Bizarrely. And um, here we have Hi Turkey. All done. Pretty good? No. Not good, why? Well, Mary probably gave up on the last screen. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm sure that um, that doesn't happen on Office 365. Does it, will we? All right. So that's, um, that's kind of how that all hangs together. Now, the grand finale. She's finished. The whole app is working as she wanted. How does other users use this? How do other users get this data? No? Well, in this case... Um, the, the search works here, but what if I want it to work? Oh, let's just see if it finds anything else. Um, could it find uh, William here? So the search works just as well as um, the other search in Light Switch. But what if I want other people outside this app to see it? Are they going to see this? Because where is this living? This, all this data is living in a SQL database. 
how does another user in the SharePoint organization get to this data? How do they even know about it when I search for William or Turkey or something? What's the solution? SharePoint guys, please help me. How do I share all this data? Something cool in SharePoint. B, C, okay, do I have to tell you the last letter? BCS? No. Oh my goodness. All right. So, all right, I'm going to tell you guys something because you obviously don't know enough about SharePoint. One of the first things we teach consultants here when they first join SSW, if they're not sure about something, SharePoint is the answer. The question is irrelevant. Okay? And um, one of the reasons that SharePoint is so cool is because there's something in it called BCS, which allows you to connect to all other, all the other data in your organization, and it renders out in SharePoint, in, in SharePoint search, which is really good. How do you make that work? Well, you use this BCS stuff and you use SharePoint Designer. Mary will need to go ahead and expose all this data. It would be good if this was just done automatically. Um, but basically what she does is she opens up this power user tool called SharePoint Designer. And then she comes in here and she creates what's called an external content type. Ha anybody in this room ever done this? Not a soul. Oh, okay. So let me just show you how you do this. You just come in here and you type, um, what is this called? This is called Northwind. Northwind Sydney, I think I called it. Um, then you click here and it says, what are you after? Well, I'm after a brand new SQL Server database. And I am going to connect to that with SQL Server. I'm Mary now. She would do this. Database Server. Do you think she knows what Database Server? <laughs> so, it's not as bad as you might think. See, um, where's my Access Database? There it is. Northwind, there he is. So Mary would need to come back here and try to work out where is this database? Any idea? See the info tab? Server name, pretty cool. Now we're in business. Um, sorry, come back. There's the server. And I'll go back to this. And there's my database name, not very nice. I wish I could press rename there to give it a nicer name. Um, but you can see that you give that a name, Northwind. Um, you need to set this up, and I won't, I'll, I'll very quickly just tell you. It's in um, Central Admin. Mary, uh, Mary won't have access to this. Yes, that's right, but this would be set up for her. And she, Oh, yes, it's a good point. How would she know that? Um, this is a BCS thing, more than... Uh, and I, I would like the access team to support this scenario and just automatically press a button and it creates this stuff. But I'm just showing you, because Mary should know, or a, a SharePoint power user should know this. It's not that, that hard after you've um, been doing it. So I'll just carry on. I'll go OK. And um, we have gone ahead now and created that Northwind database. I just need to check what the name of that is because it didn't select it for me. Oh, sorry. Um, what was it called? E88. There it is. That's the one, the last one. So what Mary would now do is the table she, she wants to expose, let's just say it's the pro customer's one. She goes create all operations. Okay, she will do a different one. <laughs> Products, create all operations. Oh, oh, goodness gracious! All right, Mary's going to get stuck now. Never mind. I'm going to use another one. Oh, this is all right. We're going to create all operations. Oh, goodness. And that's because you already created that default. Yes. It, uh, well, I haven't created this one, but um, anyway, I can I refresh. All right, 
Um, anyway, you, I, I'll give it one more go. Okay, we'll go next, next, finish, and now what we would do is we would come into external, where is it? We go into uh, lists and libraries, we create an external list, and we select this um, North Wind Sydney, which is not here. Do you know why it's not here? This is not going to be obvious to anyone. But that, re that one I just created then, North Wind Sydney, it's not saved. See the little star? I don't think that's obvious to people. I don't think she understands she's got another MDI style window open. But it's gone now. I come back here and I'll create that external list. And there's North Wind Sydney. There's OK. She will, what, what did I, was that customers? Customers Sydney. I go OK, and uh, then I will have this new list. Where is he? Oh, there. Thank you. And preview in the browser. And there's all my data that was in the Access database moved to SQL Server, now exposed here when, you, when any other power users inside SharePoint want to create web parts and use this data. All her data has been exposed. It's, it's quite a story and moving, you know, some moving parts. But I'm pretty happy with the foundation of what um, the SharePoint team or the Access team have created here. The obvious, um, I, I'd love to know you guys who, I'm going to, um, let me just, any questions on this before I ask for a final vote on something? All right. So let's um, fly ahead. I'm not going to go through all this, um, all these, all this stuff because we've spent a bit of time. But you've seen the light switch. You've seen light switch and how you go through, add this. You see this control layout in the middle. This is kind of um, your your model over here, your view model here, and this is kind of your view in a control layout. It's not a GUI. Layer designer forms designer, and, but you can you saw how you had power with that. I'd like the access team to support the same type of thing. Okay, I have a question. I want to know if you had to give your power users in your organisation access services or light switch, which way are you going to go? And I'm going to require a vote. Who is going to give them in their mind access services? Hands up. Who is going to give them light switch? That is 100% light switch. Whew. That is completely different to what I got in Melbourne. I got 90% access services and probably less than 10% um, light switch. So it's amazing how, how different that is. Um, I just did this in Canberra and it was pretty much 50-50. So that's, um, that's very interesting. Yeah, to be fair, yes. Um, <laughs> to be fair, TJ brings up that I was speaking at a SharePoint conference. Yes. Um, but, yeah, and so obviously they're familiar with the SharePoint infrastructure, but they were, and my audience was developers. Uh, they're just developers that are familiar with SharePoint. As you can see, when I ask you about BCS, nobody here knew about BCS, which is... Um, which is never going to happen if you're using SharePoint in your organization because it becomes an integral part of what you're doing. Um, and that is interesting how it's tilted all your votes. But anyway, I want to tell you, you have more than these two things to choose from. And, I've, and I just want to tell you what you've got. You've got access services, and the good is it's easy and quick. It looks after the schema. Deploying to Azure is simple. The bad, no, no extending with JavaScript. The, you know, license fees for a public site doesn't exist at this point. Um, so if you want to make this public completely anonymous, you're going to have some strife in terms of licensing. Um, in term, but I believe that that's going to be sorted out, so it might not be a long-term problem. The developer mindshare, big thing to me. Unless you have developers promoting this, there's problems. And I think that's going to be an issue. 
and a mistake, mistake by the access team, in my opinion. Um, info path. You can do what I've done tonight. I would not do it. I would tell you it's pretty much dead. It must have one foot in the grave. All I know is that, um, the, that the info path blog was updated two years ago. It's, it's kaput. The info path tips guy, he died just recently as well, last year. All right. CRM. I could have done all this in CRM as well, and I think many of you would have been more impressed than what I've shown you to the, the two options tonight. It has a, a forms designer which is in HTML. It's not great, but it's not bad, and you can extend it all with, um, with plugins and JavaScript and stuff. The bad is there's a license fee per user. We did light switch, which is um, pretty good. And there's developer love, there's an extensibility toolkit. Um, I think that the bad would be that a, that a user has to open up Visual Studio and that would scare them. Now before I get off that point, I do want to just tell you something. A power user seeing all this stuff is, I agree, horrible. Like, just there's so much stuff here that they're not going to use. Architecture, analyze. I want to tell you that you can fix that. You can go, let me think about that, import and export settings. You can import the selected settings. You could say no, just import, I override everything. I just want light switch. Next, take that. And I now, my menus are just light switch much nicer. I wouldn't want that personally, but if I'm giving this to a power user, I would want to do this. And I think that should be made way more obvious when I'm in the tool. It should say, do you want to switch to just light switch menus? Like simplify everything quick and then reset back. But because I don't think only the, the devs that are going to go to some lengths are going to make it nice and easy for them. Anyway, that might take away a little of the pain of Visual Studio. Yes, sir. Is there an express version? Is there an express version for light switch? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I don't think so because basically the way light switch are going to make their money is because uh, they don't charge for the, the runtime. They are only charging you for the developers using it. So every power user using this will have to have a license for light switch. Okay, there's, this story is not done, but it's coming. We're going to have a new Visto. Um, <coughs> this apps for SharePoint is going to come together. You're going to see white papers on this story very soon. It's going to be something of consideration, kind of. ASP.NET Dynamic Data, we loved this for a while and we developed some good solutions. I wouldn't recommend go going that way. This other way, ASP.NET MVC scaffolding. This is an option. You have to open up Visual Studio. You, um, you, get, you have to kind of create it per, per table, so it's not automatic. But what you have in terms of infrastructure is quite good. And you could always use Light Switch just to create all the services. That might be an option. Um, but you don't need to. You can just use um, this MVC scaffolding. This is how you do it. You create a brand new project. You go Add Controller. You then choose this MVC controller with read write actions using Entity Framework. You choose that and you have a UI. Now how do we fix this UI so it looks nice? jQuery Mobile, that's what I would suggest. Okay. So, there are your choices. This is now Adam's opinion on what Microsoft should do. I think if I was Microsoft, I would be doing a, pro, a you know, approaching this problem slightly differently. When you think of a power user, do you think that they care whether they're using light switch or access services? They're just going to come to you guys and say, which one do I use? And in the end, what do you think they care about? Solution. They care about how they're going to get their data. And where do they want their data after all this? They generally, most power users I talk to, want it exported to Excel. Their first question is, can I get that stuff out into Excel? And this story is getting much better now that Power Pivot and Power View can consume mammoth amounts of data. This story in Excel is getting really good. So, with that, my 
thinking, I think the power users generally should be told, go to Excel, start there, go to a form, and choose your forms designer. And Excel would drive the opening, the creation of the SharePoint app and dropping into there and all that type of stuff. So then they're just inside Excel. They choose their forms engine, whichever they want. Access, CRM, Light Switch, Wufu, which a lot of people are starting to use now. Form Site, Form Spring. There's so many of these tools coming out and all they care about is the data ends up in Excel and they'll use it. So that's what I would be doing if I was Microsoft. All these choices are driven and they're opening up from Excel. So, with that, um, thank you for coming tonight. We, uh, we had a, a good time going through a long news session, um, access services, light switch, um, talked about a few other options, and uh, now it's time for the pub. So, thank you guys. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.